had been messing around with Canvas a little bit and threw together a couple demos uh, just because I was enjoying playing with it. Matt Satmarie had kind of kicked me off on like look at like, look at these interesting things that you can do. And so I started playing with it a little bit and then ended up writing like a really quick blog post uh, that we posted this morning on, on the Mux blog. But it's so we're just going to talk through a little bit of some fun that you can have with HTML5 video and the Canvas element, and you can do some really neat little manipulations with it. So this first, this first example is just a really simple, I should probably take a step back here and actually explain Canvas for a second in HTML5 video. So the, the idea here is that you can use Canvas to do some, you can render into this 2D context, and so you can do some really interesting image manipulations. And with video, you're just constantly surprise, rendering frames into this canvas element. Um, so this first example is just legitimately grabbing a, uh, and all of this is really simple, like this player is just HLSJS, uh, so there's nothing fancy going on in anything like that, but we, we grab the video element, uh, grab the canvas, create this context in our canvas, and then we listen to it start playing, and then we kick off this request animation frame. The old way of doing this was you would do set timeout, uh, but the issue is you could run into stuttering there. Um, it wasn't, you would have to do all this p guessing to try to like maybe make the timeout match the frame rate, like the refresh rate of the monitor. Uh, so request animation frame actually knows, the browser knows what the refresh rate of the monitor is, and we'll call this, uh, call this timeout every time. So then, or as it'll call it as fast as it can. So if you have a long running task, like we do in one of the later examples, uh, it won't necessarily fire at the exact same rate. So we listen for, for play, then we kick off this request animation frame, and then all we do is just draw the, uh, in that context of the canvas, we just draw whatever's in the video element that we set up earlier. Uh, and this is just saying, put it at zero, at zero x, y, and then set the height and width of the context to be the same as the video. Yes. So this is really simple. All this is going to do is, wow, just puts another video underneath. So the filter one takes this a tiny step further. All we've done is just copied, copied frames of video from one, from the video element into this canvas element. Uh, so that's not terribly useful. We already have a perfectly useful video element. Um, although you can do interesting things, like if you wanted to warp the video slightly and just play it back in there, you could do that. It's kind of neat. Um, so same setup, but in this one, uh, what we're going to do is manipulate the image data a little bit. So we draw into the canvas, uh, the, we draw into the canvas context, and then we get the image data back out of it. Uh, and now what that's going to be is an array of RGBA uh, values and then we can kind of do whatever we want from there. So in this one, all we're doing is just averaging the three values so that we get black and white. So we take the image data, iterate over it four items at a time, uh, so four RGA, RGBA values at a time, do our little manipulation in place, and now we're, instead of rendering the original video, we're gonna render that manipulated image data. So if you click play again, now we have black and white. So we haven't done much here, but it's kind of cool that we're like, it uh, demystifies a level of this where we're just getting RGBA values, averaging them out, spitting them back onto a new context, and now we have black and white. Sweet. Uh, so then <laughs> we, I had read this uh, as a potential solution to a problem that we'd run into. So uh, shout out to Phil for doing a ton of the work this year on both the uh, a Demux website, like the review stuff getting up and running. He is now a React expert, uh, just saying. Uh, but when we put together this website, our designer had like put this in After Effects and there's this project called Lottie that Airbnb made where it will um, let you do these animations in this big data, like it gives you this big JSON blob uh, and then we'll kind of render this animation out in JavaScript. Um, I think the JavaScript bundle plus the data object was about four megabytes and it would absolutely crush uh, my computer, which is like a brand new uh, MacBook Pro. So 
Uh, I can't even imagine what this would do to <laughs> most computers in the wild, honestly. So we just ended up going to uh, adding a video. We're like, great, we'll use a video element. We're a video conference. This makes sense. Uh, put it in there, and he's like, oh, the, the background color doesn't quite match. I have this whole Slack chat with him where he's like, oh, the background color doesn't quite match. Um, I'm just going to slightly change the background color of the hero to then be the same background color as this image. Does it. It works. He's like, cool. Uh, opens it up on his phone, opens it up in other browsers. There are slight differences in each one. So thanks to how video renders color spaces and how different hardware and software uh, decodes those color spaces, you kind of can't actually pull the blinds enough to make that really work. Uh, so we ended up just going with a animated GIF, um, <laughs> as you do. Uh, <laughs> but there is a solution here. Um, so what we did in this example is we're doing the same, same setup as before, nothing crazy there. We're going to draw that video image into the context. But this time, uh, we're going to just get a single data point. So we know that our, our image, or our video, is completely surrounded by this purple, because uh, it's meant to just kind of meld into the background. Uh, so we're just going to grab uh, a point from the very edge, so a one by one pixel from the very edge of the video. Uh, and we know that that's going to return an RGB A value. So we're just going to grab RGB. We don't care about the opacity. And then we're going to do something very scientific and set the body style CSS <laughs> to be that background color. <laughs> uh, and so if you look, now it works. And so if you look really carefully here, you'll see that the, I don't know if you can quite tell in the, in the projector, but you can see that there's not quite a match in the top actual video element, but in the one below, it's perfectly, it's perfectly matched up. Uh, and what's happening there is when we render to the Canvas context, the browser is doing that work for us of translating this into uh, uh, the right color space. And now we can use this RGBA value and set our background to it. And now we have a perfectly blended background. Um, we're still using a GIF on the home page. So then it gets, like, you could go a little bit crazier. So this last one's kind of a, a just like me being dumb with um, uh, TensorFlow. I mean, like, obviously, whenever you're doing something technical, you should probably sprinkle some machine learning on it. Uh, so I froze my computer. Uh, <coughs> used my extensive machine learning knowledge personally and uh, just blindly imported a TensorFlow model that exists already in the internet. Uh, same setup as before. Um, now we're going to do, s well, this is all just like because it takes freaking forever to load these models because they're huge. Um, and then we're going, we've made this little outline stuff function. So let me go back to that. We draw the image in the context. Now we're going to grab that image data back out like we were before. This is just the same exact situation. But now we're going to feed that image data back into uh, the TensorFlow model. And then we're going to take those predictions that the TensorFlow model, so it'll take each frame, pass it to this TensorFlow model, uh, and the TensorFlow model is just trying to do uh, object detection. It's going to pass that back into uh, this outline stuff function, which just knows that this each prediction comes in, has an x and a y value and a height and width. So we're going to just draw uh, some text onto the screen that says what the prediction model thinks this is, and then we're going to draw a square around it. Uh, Phil doesn't like this example, but I love it. Uh, so if you look here, it's a bird at the moment. <laughs> Still a bird. Uh, person, bird, person. At one point, it's a cow. Uh, frisbee. It was a frisbee for just a brief moment. Uh, the pollen is a sports ball. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, so Phil is like, it's way more reasonable if you show a dog. And so uh, <laughs> I think it is a horse once or twice, but uh, vision is hard. So 
if you'll, if you'll notice when you're watching this, it's not quite rendering smoothly. Um, and this is what I was talking about around request animation frame. It's only going to call that as fast as it can computationally. So like as it goes through, this model is doing the object detection on each frame as it comes in. It's not quite doing that in real time. Uh, and so it'll, it'll stutter just a little bit. But um, it's still fun. So you could use this to like, I wouldn't actually use it to render things out, but you could like show what's, what's happening in the video around it, things like that. Um, so that's pretty much it, but it's it's just a fun like it kind of opened my like mind a little bit uh, when I realized that it's really just this array of RGBA values that you can mess around with, do whatever you want. You can draw into this context element. You can kind of play with video in a way that I hadn't really uh, tried before. So it was it was fun. You can do things like because you have this RGBA value, you could do things like green screen effects, for example. You could find every value that is a certain color or within a certain color range. Uh, and delete it. So now you have like nice little green screen overlays, little things like that. Um, so that's pretty much it. It was just, this is just me uh, spending too much time on a Saturday in Code Sandbox. <laughs> Not on the simplest examples. Um, like doing a little like RGBA manipulation, like all that stuff was fine. The TensorFlow models, uh, that got a little crazier, especially on um, less powerful hardware. That one would not would not ship that example in the wild. Uh, but for the most part, honestly, the the cross uh, cross browser cross device support there um, was surprisingly fine. Um, it doesn't need to. You could just render the audio in the same way as you were before. Just don't render the video element. You could use web audio itself. You could render the audio into web audio and be just fine. Uh, cool. <laughs>